What's good, guys, man? Welcome back to Alpha Talk today. Um, got another calling show for you guys. Let's jump right into it. Let's get started, man. Let's get it. Back to Alpha Talk today. Got another calling show for you guys, man. Um, the Zoom chat is already filled with some guys. If you are not in the Zoom chat, um, post the Zoom chat one more time. Try to fill up the room. First come, first serve. I'm gonna take the first caller. I'm gonna take the first caller. Raise your hand, guys, in the Zoom chat if you want to be called on. Raise your hand in the Zoom chat if you want to be called on. Raise your hand in the Zoom chat if you want to be called on. If you leave a Zoom chat and you don't raise your hand, that's on you. Let's go, EK. EK, raise EK, raise your hand. If you leave a Zoom chat and you don't, gotta mute me in the background, bro. Let's go, EK. EK, raise your hand. Mute me in the background, bro. Can you guys hear EK? It's Ike, bro. I'm not jeering. How you don't know? I'm not jeering like you, boy. Oh, okay, if you're going to talk to me crazy, I'm going to kick you off my show. I'm playing. I'm playing. What's up, though? Can you guys hear him? Ike, comment one, guys. If you guys can hear him, comment one. If you guys can hear Ike, speak loud and clear, bro. Yeah, what's up, man? How you doing? I'm awesome. I'm awesome. Can you guys hear him? If you guys can hear him, comment one. Awesome. What's your question, G? Hey, what's up, bro? So I'm, I'm a huge fan of you. I've been watching you for the past two years. So um, keep it up. I love your content. Appreciate but you, man. One thing I don't agree with is that you say going down on a woman makes you like a sucker. Like, how does that really amplify to that? Because, um, you know, I go down on a woman, but they still respect me and they still give me the cheeks. So how do you correlate going down on a woman making you look like a beta or a sucker? Like, I want to hear your, you know, your, your thought about that. So you go down on women before you get the cheeks, right? Yeah, and they still give it to me, dog. Even if I, even if I don't do it. Okay, I don't do it at all, and they still give it to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, but how does that make you a beta, though? If you go down on women, because you're doing it. Are you doing it for your pleasure or her pleasure? Uh... So you enjoy eating box. That's your prerogative, bro. Uh, I'm just warning you guys that if you eat if you eat box, uh, you're gonna run into women who lose respect for you. The last girl you ate her box, where is she at? She's still she's still you know around. I mean, I she's still around for sure. I mean, I just don't want to cuff her, but she's definitely still around for sure. Okay, and when did you eat her box? First date? Uh, yeah, yeah, ankle ankle cat. Yep. So you eat you eat you eat the pussy of a girl you just met oh, first dog. night. Interesting. <laughs> That's super interesting. Yeah, listen though, I am, but check it out though. They respect me because you know they show high interest, they're cooperative, they're submissive. So it's like, and I find them very attractive. So it's like, okay, it's like they do it to me, I do it to them. Like, listen, I don't, I don't think it's going down on girls like that at all. But you know, people might have different point of views. But I just think that, like, if anything's like foreplay, you know what I'm saying? If anything, let me them respect you more or have higher interest in you. All right. Uh, I just never had a problem keeping girls without eating their boot, their, their, their pussy. And aside from the fact of validation, eating girls out the first day you meet them is insane to me. Uh, you think so? A girl you just met that's sleeping with several dudes, you're going to put your mouth on her pussy where other dudes' dick have been? That doesn't sound crazy to you? Yo, listen, listen, listen. Nah, it don't sound crazy, but... It doesn't sound crazy? 
this is Apple process too, bro. To just how you have a process, I okay. have a process. So I gotta find the but I don't listen, it's not every girl I do it. It's good the girls I find very attractive that I know like you know, they fuck with me type of shit, then I'll do it. I just, I don't go to any girl, I just meet out there. Like, I gotta find them very attractive and they gotta not play against and be fucking with me type of shit. That's so, how I do it. I just don't go to any girl I take out a date. So, so do you see how that's a form of validation? It's only, you only do it for girls that you find really attractive. So that's, uh, so, so, so let me, let's, let's talk about it. You only eat the bottom. This is your words here. You only eat pussy for girls that you find attractive. That means you're doing something extra than you wouldn't normally do for a girl that you find more attractive. That's a form of validation. Nah, but they're doing it to me. So what's that going to take for attack? Get it? And even, you know, even girls that I don't find attractive, I, like, like I said, I don't go down on any girl. I just, like, because, you know, I watch videos a lot. So, mm-hmm. when, you know, when he was like, oh, why you shouldn't go down on her, blah, 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 I totally disagree. But, I mean, I just want to hear your, your thought of pattern. I just, I just, okay, the main reason why Guys, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about it right here. The main reason why I stopped eating pussy was not so much. It was part of the validation, but because of my safety. Um, I understand that these girls are sleeping with several dudes. That uh, the that alone is enough for me to say, you know what? Because if you're gonna fuck her with a condom and then you eat her pussy with your tongue, you know you can catch every STD that you can catch without a condom with your tongue. That's what I'm saying. So you're still licking her pussy and then you still fuck her with a condom. Every disease you could catch with the without with the condom, you can catch with your tongue. Yeah, okay. okay yes, so yes, my safety, my the longevity of my life, I just I'm not I'm I knowing the the modern day woman and just how many guys she's with. I just that's that I can't sleep well at night. I didn't put my, my lips on like she probably just got nutted in two hours ago. I just I can't I can't do it, bro. I feel, I feel, you know, so so just consider it for your own safety, right? All of you guys watching for your own safety. Uh just know outside of the fact of validation, right? Every STD you can catch. Going in raw without a condom, you can catch with your tongue. So just keep that in mind. So if you're gonna fuck her with a condom and you eat her pussy, like it, it that's everything, everything you could get, bro, without the condom, you could give it so so just just be mindful of that, right? If that's if that's if you still want to do it, that's that's cool with me. All right, man. Appreciate you, man. Have a good one. All right. Next person. iPhone. Listen, guys. I'm going to post a Zoom chat one more time. Post a Zoom chat one more time. I'm going to post a Zoom chat one more time. Guys, fill up the room. First come, first serve. You guys see the Zoom chat is supposed to be pinned right now. It's supposed to be pinned. Fill up the Zoom chat. This is how you could get the call in. Um, iPhone, what's your name, bro? Where you calling from? Yo, what up, babe? How are you? I'm awesome, man. What's, how's it going? That's good, bro. My name is Manuel. Manuel? Manuel, bro. Okay. Bro, I, I heard you live in Colombia. How do you manage the language? I know you're not native. So I'm like, you're not Spanish. How do you manage it? I speak fluent Spanish. I'm not going to get on here and speak Spanish. Uh, this is not what my uh, the show is about, but I speak the language, bro. No, I feel you. That, that's what's up, bro. You know, that, that's good. Bro, but what made you choose, you know, that's good that you, you chose a, uh, something that you, you want to do mm-hmm. rather than what you studied. But what made you choose this kind of field? I've always been into I've always been into self improvement, right? When I even when I was in college, I used to help my like my peers get back get in better shape. I was doing that shit for free um, because I, I ran track as an athlete, so I was always kind of in better shape than most people. 
and I've always been interested in, in in the dynamics between male and female. Like I've always, I've always felt the calling to help my fellow man be better Boy. with women. So like it, it just it was always natural for me, honestly. Yeah, I hear you. I think that's actually something that is really needed in society. You know, you know what it. Uh, you basically just looking for a problem to solve, right? That's what you preach. Yep. You know, Exactly. I, 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 as soon as I get a notification, FedEx posts or something, I, if I'm free, bro, I go right away, right into it. Appreciate that, man. I appreciate I, the love, man. I just know, bro. I just know, bro. It's going to be valuable. You always know how to, you know, add value or find ways which men are lacking. And then you just, what's it called? You come in and, and help out, right? Yeah, that's the, that's the whole goal, man. I appreciate you, though, bro. You got a question? All right, man. Have a have a good night, man. Appreciate the love. All right, peace. Next guy, raise your hand, guys. All the guys in the Zoom chat right now, raise your hand. Raise your hand. I'm gonna go, Johnny. Johnny, where are you calling from? Johnny then JD. Johnny then JD. Johnny, unmute yourself. And where are you calling from, bro? Got to be quick, guys. Got to be quick. Got to be quick. Johnny, I'm going to come back to you. JD, unmute yourself. Where are you calling from? Uh, no, come on. Awesome, man. Thank you for being quickly. For being quick. <laughs> What's your question? All right. So I was on the, uh, the last show you did with the uh, chicks. Mm -hmm. My number one chick, she had asked, uh, well, she had said something like, why would I prioritize a man for a marriage when he's just going to cheat on me anyways. Mm -hmm. And don't you think it's kind of like misleading? Because in my opinion, I don't think that many guys cheat. I mean. So, so I don't think you understood my point. My point was that a man cheating and a woman cheating is two different things. Right? If you're a guy that has vowed to take care of a woman, right? you have leveled up as a man to become high value, you're, you look good, you dress well, you're providing, right? You cheating is sharing those resources with another woman. You fucking another girl, in my opinion, and I, I believe I speak for most men, we don't love every single girl we sleep with. And we, won't, we don't plan on marrying every single girl we sleep with. As a matter of fact, most guys don't, we, you barely remember the names of most girls you sleep with. Because sex is not something that is as emotional for us. All right? So it's, 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 not our, it's not what I believe cheating is as a man. Well, now, my point was, like, she was saying, uh, why would we prioritize a man or when we're looking for, like, a high-value high man if he's just going to cheat anyways? And I think it's kind of misleading. I, I agree with that. I do think a man can love multiple women at the same time. But when you kind of tell chicks, oh, you can't get a high-value man, uh, unless he's uh, gonna be fucking other girls, I think that's a little misleading. Okay, let me ask you this: Do you believe you're a high value guy? Nah, not yet. Okay, when you believe you become a high value guy, and you have more, have you ever in your life? Let me just, just maybe you haven't. Have you ever had several beautiful women that wanted to sleep with you? Uh, yeah. At the same time. You talking about like Basil? No, bro. Have you had? Several beautiful women that you had yeah, your pickings yeah. with. Okay, and what did you do? Well, I'm the prime guy to ask this because I'm, I'm a Christian, so I don't really do all that. Okay, so for most guys, um, if we have several women that want to get with us, we will choose to be with those women. Does that mean that we're going to love those women and be with all those women? No, but I'm speaking for most guys, right? I understand how most guys think. And I believe a man's resources and his who he's willing to die for is who he loves. So if if you if what you believe in says you can't do so and so, I don't think that's that's just to to put all men in that category because a lot of guys, right, would rather just have several women they date and have one girl they love. That's just I I I I, I have been coaching guys for years. I know 
if most guys, if they could have women they sleep with a girl that, as as their main chick, if you don't want to practice that, that is fine. But what I'm what the advice I'm giving those girls is, for the most part, when a guy becomes extremely high value, the guy that they want, right? Because they want a guy who's making X amount of money, looks a certain way, right? Has all these resources, and what usually comes with that is other women. And I don't think that he's a bad person that now all of a sudden that he's bust his ass to get to this level, he should only be fucking you. That is crazy to me. I don't think you guys should accept that. If you bust your ass to get to a certain level and you want to sleep with several women, right? As long as you're taking care of the one that you claim you love, I'm fine with that. I just don't think it's fair for guys. Now, I agree with you, but what I'm saying is, don't you... Okay, so if you agree that we should be... uh women should start having family sooner, don't you? Yeah. So, they had that happen again. Don't you think we should be pushing, uh, like, nuclear families and all that? It's up to the man. The man gets to decide. And that's what I'm saying. When you say when you say things like, uh, a lot of the top men are just going to cheat, it kind of pushes these women away and be like, okay. No, 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 no. See, okay. here's the bullshit attack on the red pill now. And I'm about to debunk this whole nonsense. In the in in the space now, people are coming after the red pill because they're saying, "Oh, the red pill is just is pushing men to be promiscuous." the The reason the red pill existed, I'm about to debunk this whole nonsense right now. The reason the red pill exists is because women decided to not date one guy. Men, for generations, have been willing to provide and protect for one woman. Women have said, fuck that. We want to be independent. We are going to date whoever we want to. Guys have every single right to adjust. So coming after the red pill and saying, oh, the red pill is promoting. No, but but this, I, listen, your question, I have seen it. I pay attention to what's going on, bro. This question, you listen to me. This question you're asking, I am seeing it going on right now in our space. And people are saying, oh, the red pill is just pushing men to be this, this, and this. Men are just adjusting to what is going on. How the fuck are we going to tell men that we should push nuclear families when if you get married, the woman is incentivized to, to leave with half your shit, that she's dating several dudes, so he should just he should still be pushing a nuclear family? What the fuck? That is fucking insane, bro. All these motherfuckers... Listen to me. All these motherfuckers that talk shit about red pill have never been red pill. They don't understand the fucking meaning. They don't understand where this ideology came from. They just they just followed the trend and now they want to turn their backs on it. The red pill is adjusting to the truth. That's all it is. So men can push nuclear families. We can promote women to be with one guy. But guess what? We have to adjust. When two out of three men are not getting laid, but women are fucking the same dudes, how do you expect men to still be pushing a nuclear family? When you got guys who get married and the women are incentivized to leave with half their shit, how the fuck can you tell guys to push a nuclear family? That is retarded. So no, I'm not saying, like, I, I understand that you're not coming at me. Okay. You're saying uh, men just adjusting and all that, bro? You yeah. shouldn't be adjusting. We should be turning turn the tide. No, we don't. We don't have a say so in the court of law. We don't get. We don't get a say so. No, that's not how it works. If if we can listen to me, if men can say, you know what, half of my shit shouldn't be gone when I marry a girl, then okay, we can turn things around. But as a man right now, if you all you guys watching this, as a guy right now, if you decide to get married, the laws are not changing. So how can I, as a human being, as a coach, give you any advice other than do what's best for you? All right. Um, you got to let me finish, too, bro. What I'm saying is Go ahead. we really want to make really turn it all around. Uh -huh. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, I'm tired of, like, you know, always complaining about feminists and stuff, bro. These feminists ain't got no power, bro. Bro. Like, we talk about high value them. Nigga, we the ones with money. We the ones with influence. All okay. these guys on YouTube got fresh and fit. But they're not, they're just complaining about it. And they bring only, I'm not even trying to like, don't know, salt in their name or anything. But we be giving these OnlyFans chicks cloud, 
and all this power. And I'm saying we should not be doing that. What do you mean giving all infl- only fans six clout and power? What do you mean by that? Because, you know, like, we just do, like, oh, I don't know how to explain it, but that's my bad, but. I'm trying to have you like understand me. No, I'm trying to I'm trying to understand you. I'm, I want you to explain to me how we giving the girls power. Like, but you know, I, I'm talking about most guys. Most guys put chicks on a pedestal. If we really wanted, we could turn this all around. Okay, and what is the red pill telling guys to do? And, no, what? Not give chicks. I'm not talking about the red pill. I'm talking about most guys. Right. And and what I'm telling you is this, bro. Listen to me. Listen to me from the from the bottom of your heart. What I'm telling you is this. It's not that guys are complaining, right? Because if you watch my channel, I tell guys to not feel sorry for themselves. Don't bitch and complain because it's not going to change. But I'm somebody who has integrity, right? I don't think it's fair to men that we are telling them to bust their ass because that's the that's the primary message of Red Pill. Be the best version of yourself. Do the self-improvement. Do the self-improvement. Do the self. You motherfuckers got to be tired of hearing do the self-improvement. I can't tell guys to do that and then turn around and tell them, yeah, man, uh, we should also be pushing uh, the nuclear family. When if you marry a chick, she has every incentive to leave you. I can't tell guys that. I have to tell guys that they need to do what's best for them. And when the laws change, okay, we can get back to we can, we can get back we can get back to pushing the nuclear family, but it's not in God's favor. That's why I think everybody that's coming against the rare pill right now is a bitch. Because I think I don't think people understand what the real message behind the rare pill is. Right? Nobody's telling guys to complain and whine, and we're saying be the best version of yourself. But I can't sit up here and, and call myself a person of integrity if I'm telling you, bro. I'm sure you're on the self improvement, right? I'm sure you're trying to. I'm sure you're trying to be a better man, right? Yes or no? True, yes. Now, would I be a genuine person if I told you, hey, man, you should still be looking for a relationship when I know more than half of these relationships end up in a divorce? And if you busted your ass to get to the point where you, where you are, she can leave with half your stuff. Would I be a good person for giving you that advice? Wait, so, so your, your advice is not to get married? Hell no, not right now. It's not in your best interest. I would not give you advice that is not in your best interest. If things change, if the laws change, okay. But I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't throw you in the wilderness without a gun and then expect you to make it out in a war. That's what, that's what I'm saying. We can do both. We can be like, oh yeah, don't give me only fans chase no attention or in these hoes, no attention, mm-hmm. no, no resources, no nothing. But you should be looking for a good wife to start a family with. It's not, but 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 guess here's here's the caveat to that. A man has to create himself to be chosen by anyone. So I'm, I'm agree with you, yeah. right, right. So so let's, let's 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 think about it. Right before a guy right now can even get sex or even get a good girl, he has to be attractive to most women, and he has to have gone through at least a good amount of understanding of how to find the right girl for him. When these girls will pretend to be something that they're not, they'll pretend to be this girl with ulterior motives. It's not fair to men. I can't, I cannot, I will not be able to go to sleep at night. If I'm not telling guys, you included, bro, I know you might want a family, but I need you to hold off. I need you to pump the brakes. Because even if you find this unicorn, all right, even if you find this unicorn, when, when there's a pot of gold always hovering above her head, right, that gives her incentive to leave you, it's I, I can't let you do that and be okay with that with that advice. Because I'm, not, I'm, I'm saying what I'm saying is we do get some improvement. Me myself, I don't plan to get married to like in my early mid twenties. But I'm just saying, like, we should kind of be promoting like families more, like how to have a family. Uh, and I understand I that. I, from these women. That's what I'm kind of saying. I need to bro, I, family more a little bit. I understand what you're saying, but the road to be a successful man is already taxing enough, right? Meaning, if you are a guy that 
ever becomes a guy that has options in women, right? It's going to be hard work for you to get there. I don't want that to be you. I don't want that to be your primary objective or focus where you might make the wrong decision and pick the wrong woman. Right. And then later down the line, you suffer the consequences. Look at Dr. Dre. Look at Will Smith. Look at Mr. Simp himself, Steve Harvey. Three failed marriages telling guys that they should be taking care of girls. When you have, when Steve Harvey, this motherfucker went broke picking the wrong girl and would still get on fucking internet and, and tell dudes that their job is to take care of a woman. When he went broke picking the wrong woman, the better advice would be say, you know what? If you want a family, boy, if that's what you want, get yourself in order. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I got one more question for you. Go ahead. Do you think hookup culture is creating more helps? It's creating what? More helps. Um, I believe it's women that are that are that created hookup culture, not men. But do you think the same hookup culture that women created that you participate in is it creating more helps? Probably so, yeah. Definitely. So should we really be doing that? We didn't create the hookup culture. <laughs> we're, we're just we keep on. We don't, we don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. Let me explain to you. I'm gonna slow it down for you, right? Women are the ones who decided that they want to sleep around, right? And they several do that at a time. As a guy, right now, if you don't compete, you're going to get finesse. Meaning, hear me out. Let's say you're a guy that wants a family, right? You go on a date with a girl. You say, okay, this, this is the girl I want to be with. This girl is probably already sleeping with two to three dudes at the time she's going on a date with you. So at that moment, it, there's no more incentive for you to court her. That's what I'm saying. If women were dating one guy at a time, we're not, you know, jumping from dick to dick. Okay, we can stop participating. But we have been, the cards we're dealt with. I'm somebody who's realistic. The cards we have been dealt with, we need to adjust to. It's no point of having a fairy tale, trying to imagine some shit. This is not the life that we're living in right now. Men have to adjust. I understand that you might want a family, but if a guy doesn't adjust, he's not going to get anything. The girls are still going to fuck the top 1% dude and, and lead you on for as long as possible. So the better thing for you to do is to adjust, become that top 1% guy, filter the bad women out, and then eventually pick the woman that you want to be with. But you can't do it. You can't do it from the from the from the lower end of the totem pole. You can't be the guy without options and then think you're gonna compete with these girls who can fuck, suck, do whatever the fuck they want to do every week. You're not gonna win. I guess but just where I'm coming from is I don't think we should we should be giving them any attention. That's just where I'm coming from. Bro, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish what you want is what we're dealing with, but it's not reality. Adapt or die. That's my mentality, bro. I'm all, I'm somebody that I'm, I'm all about adapting. This is the game. I adjust. All right, bro. I appreciate it. All right, man. Have a good one. Johnny, go ahead, Johnny. Johnny oh, first. Man. Johnny first. Unmute yourself, Johnny. How you doing, Fex? What's going on, man? Where you calling from? Uh, hi, I'm uh, from California. I have, I have a quick question. Uh, it's really, uh, the topic is about uh, oh, a woman acting hot and cold mm -hmm. back and forth. Um, so basically, I've known this girl for over a year. She's uh, related to my cousin's wife's cousin. And so the only time I would see her is if, for uh, for example, like the wife does uh, a hangout at her house or we go out for the night on the weekends. Mm -hmm. But usually I would see her not like often. I would see her like uh, like once a month, maybe twice, once every two months. So, mm -hmm. But uh, <clears throat> so basically, yeah, I just, I'm just this is the first time I'm like I'm meeting like a girl. That, that it just this is very mixed signals, I guess you could say. Some there's some hangouts like 
She would be flirtatious. She's you know? not interested. You, you're wasting your time. Okay. Excuse me? You're wasting your time. Let me save you the heartache right now. If you only okay. see her when your wife's cousins... Wa- cousin's wife's cousin. Okay, when your cousins, whoever... Yeah. If, if that's the only time you see her, she ain't fucking with you. Yeah. If she's not trying to make... Hard, it, listen to me, bro. You know what women do when they like you? Mm-hmm. When a woman, yeah, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll try to they'll make time, you know. When of course. Twice. Oh, uh, why did you? Couple months back, I see the client, of course, like to make excuse, like, oh, I had plans with uh, friends or cousins. But why did you? Since then, like, I stopped asking her out. Why? Okay. okay. Excuse me? Mm-hmm. But you asked her out again? No, I haven't since then. Okay. But, uh, but ever since that happened, she still acts like, Act like for, like flirtatious, you know. She wants for, to talk to free attention. Listen, this is the game, guys. Let me help you out, right? She doesn't yeah. mind getting your free attention, but not giving you no yeah. pussy. Yeah. <laughs> See, she don't mind when she come around. She get validated by you. She don't mind that, and you keep yeah. falling for it like a sucker. Guys, I need my yeah, guys. Yeah, I saw- I did some research and I, I uh, you made a video about it, something about women acting hot and cold. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I just want a, a, pretty much a clarification because I have uh, opinions from other friends. Like, they told me, bro, just fucking just tell straight up, like, what's her intentions? And that nah, that, don't listen to your, that. don't listen to your dumbass friends. Don't listen to your dumbass friends. They don't know what the fuck you're talking about. A woman who is no, interested in right, you. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Listen, you a man of work. If a girl, if if a girl doesn't like my my nostrils in my nose, I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn what a girl doesn't like about me. I'm I'm barely gonna ask you once. Okay. But I refuse to be the guy that you use for attention and validation. I refuse to be the guy where where I come around now. You want to get all they want. They love attention, bro. Mm-hmm. She doesn't mind getting it for free. Mm-hmm. So remove yourself. You know what? Stop going to gatherings. Skip a couple of them. Mm-hmm. Go find you a hot chick. Go find you a girl that look better than her. Okay. This is how you guys get in this one night and stuff. These women, these women play you. And but guys, one thing I want to explain to us guys is this. We have a weakness, all right? The weakness us men have is the more we the more invested we get, all right, the harder it is for us to walk away. The, the reason being is us men, we when we put effort, we want our effort to, to reap, like we want to see the fruits out of our labor. Women don't give a damn about none of that. So you have to be mindful as a guy that you will get invested in a girl that is playing these games with you, but she's she's giving you some breadcrumbs trying to trying to bait you. All you're doing is getting more and more invested. You're getting more and more emotionally invested. Mm-hmm. Don't be yeah, don't understand. don't take part of that. Yeah, and also just on just a quick note too. Like, well, basically, I'm like. Uh, my cousin's having a graduation party and supposedly she's going to be there of course this this weekend coming up mm-hmm. I'm just like just in your opinion should I just do my own thing just just like not in a I guess approach try to get at her just do my own thing talk to families or cousins close by you know whatever just not pretty much give her that attention I, all I would say is this, don't don't act cold or angry at her now, be respectful of course yeah, like, high and by. Excuse me? Yeah. High okay. and by. Keep it to that. Gotcha. Hey, how's it going? Hope you have a nice time at the party. Deuces. <laughs> All right, thank you, sir. All right, bro. All right, bro. Thank you. All right. All right, guys. This is important, man. Um, he just got a quick question. Uh, that's not how it works, sir. I call on you. Kelvin is the next guy. Kelvin is the next guy. Everybody that 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 wants to join the live, raise your hand. I will get to you, but make sure you raise your hand and I will get to you. Kelvin, you're the next guy. Give me one second. Guys, 
One second, Kelvin. One second. One second. Guys, if you got if you got watching this right now, all right, and you want my help with something, all right, I offer free consultations to guys. So I'm gonna post that link in the chat right now. If you're struggling with something or you're not sure about something, and I can't get to every single person, or you don't want to, you don't feel comfortable hopping on the live, man, book a free, free consultation, bro. All right, because because I'm I'm gonna tell you the real. I'm not gonna bullshit you. But I'm gonna have your best interests at heart. All right, click the link, man. Get that. Get get a free consultation. All right, and stop stop wasting your damn time listening to nonsense. Because it's it's, a, it's all about adapting. In the in the current dating market that we're in, adapt or die. Okay, so click that link. It's in the chat right now. And book a free consultation. So, Kelvin, go ahead, Kelvin. What's up, coach? How you doing today? I'm doing awesome, man. Where you calling from? I'm calling from Charlotte, Texas. Okay, what you got from G? Man, my story is kind of crazy. I I I had so many questions I want to ask you. Now I'm on the spot. Some of them just you know done left my mind. Just but keep it, keep it, keep it simple. Mind. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. One question, the most uh, important question. I, I, I watch all y'all videos. You, A. Ahmed, Kevin Sanders, R.I.P., T.Y. Worldwide. He do a little bit sometimes too much, but uh, he do too much. But man, I, I get all y'all content. I'm really trying my best to apply it because I, 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 I watch all these videos, but I went totally the wrong way by going back to my ex. I met her at 19, uh, married and divorced twice, three kids with her, and now I'm right back with her, and I'm going down the same old path. I know it's I know it's all on me. I'm not I'm not I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. But uh I I just I'm just I d I don't know I don't know what to go on there, you know. I just I don't I don't know how to just it's like it's like it's more too for me just to stay away from it. like I said, I got three kids. All my kids is about her. Mm -hmm. You know, and just I I'm 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 making the plays on the field for you, coach, but I'm just not following the direction. I'm I'm screwing up here and there. That's because you don't have something that you're working on that's greater than pussy. That's what it comes down to. If, you, if you're always going back to a woman or if you're easily distracted by women, you, don't, you have not found your greater calling yet. And this is something... That's what I'm saying. It's the even worse. So you're, you're, in, you're in such scarcity that you keep going back to the same girl. Granted, you have kids with her, so you can't completely avoid her. But man, you got to get serious about your life. What are, What are some things that you're working on right now in your own life? Well, I'm. I'm I, it is my fault. I lost a lot with her. I had a great college opportunity, NFL potential. Like I said, I met her at 19, and you, this, you're gonna really slap me in the face for this. I'm 32 now, and I'm still dealing with her on and off. But um, one of my working towards, I'm kind of lost in the woods. You know, I got a full-time job, a good job. Uh, I went through so much adversity of dealing with her to where I can never keep up in life. You know, I would always end up, I was in, at first I was investing so much in her, that the more I invested in her, the more, the more it put me back. Yeah, I lost a step every time I put a dollar in it, you know, investing in her. And like, it just put me in a, in a, a position like, I am lost. You know, I don't, I, I can't, I don't know where to go next. But I know I need to leave her alone. But like, how can I get myself out of this? Or how can I just stay away? Like, we got uh, some type of jurisdiction where we can't move out of the city because you know we got kids together, so we can't move out of the county. And even though that's just you know too much, that's really not too much of an excuse. But you know that that just always this just had me lost. I, I don't know what the next step to do. Scarcity mindset. Yes, I do know I'm in that, and I'm trying my best to get out of it. Mm -hmm. So one thing. Uh, I'm, I, I got you. So this, this before I if I explain to you what you need to do, this just goes to my point of the guy two callers ago. You know, talking about talking about men should push for more families. This is this is my point. Is as a man, we need to play. We need to be extremely careful with the women we pick, because nobody's coming to save us. So when we're dealing with women of this kind of character. Like 
how can you be a man with integrity knowing what men are really going through and still tell men that the first thing they should be worrying about is marrying a chick? That is crazy. Now, also with what we did in life, you know, that's it. Oof. Right. A chick, a chick's need that. No motherfucking way I'm going to go to sleep at night and, and, and feel good about myself. With the girls that we're dealing with, I'm a, and my advice is to y'all to be pushing for family. No motherfucking way. Now, what you need to do, since you can't leave the city, man, you need to start looking into how you can start making more money online. The reason why this is so important is your full-time job, how much money are you making? Uh, I'm making like right at 19 Okay. I'm keeping solid because I got other guys on here. You know, I, I'm not. I'm not going to sugarcoat and lie. I'm making nineteen fifty. Okay, you're not making that much money. So what you need to do okay. right now is you need to dedicate your time and energy into learning a skill that can give you some kind of financial freedom. Yeah, and see the sad thing about that, I got a couple skills, but I haven't got no type of opportunity. Like I have a teaching degree, but. I, I had I, I don't have I which is my fault, but I never got a chance to go take the test. And at that time, that's when I was married, so I had so much adversity. I I couldn't I couldn't take that to the next step. Went back to school for welding, and down here it's really hard for a black male to make it in welding. And you know, and, and down here it's it's it, it's a big race thing. I'm not saying it's racist down here, but it plays a part of who you know and what color you are. And as I went back to school for welding, and that didn't work out well. Um, after that, I was really kind of, I, I, I had a lot of stuff going on with her. I still, and that put me on back burner. Uh, I jumped from so, the post office, didn't like that. So let me help you out. Listen, listen, listen. Let's forget about all the things that have not gone well. The fastest way to move forward, right, is to let go of the things that are not helping you move forward. Let go of them. Let go of all opportunities you miss. Let go of all the, because if you keep dwelling in that, it's gonna keep coming up. So let it go. Don't even talk about it. Don't bring it up no more. Don't bring it up about all the opportunities you miss. Focus on the now. You need to dedicate your time and energy into learning a new skill, an online skill. I'm not talking about welding or things that you need to go and be at a physical place. You need to adapt to the online market. Everybody, where most of the money is circulating now is online. So you need to get into some kind of sales, get into some kind of marketing. Find a way. Your life is not over. Don't give up yet. Dedicate the time. Pick a skill. I can give you several of them. Email marketing. Sales will be the best place to start. Right? Sales. Yes. You find something. Digital sales, guys in my opinion, is, is one of the fastest ways to learn a skill that will actually benefit your life and help you make more income. Digital sales. You go in a fucking Facebook group, you search you search sales, high ticket sales, that will give you the least entry, the least barrier to entry, or you can start learning something that could provide you an income. Because most commission-based sales it's up to you. There's no ceiling on, my, on how much money you can make. It forces you to learn really quickly. I think, in my opinion, guys, it's, and I'm not, I'm not pushing the sales course, none of that shit. I just know how powerful sales is in terms of helping you learn the skill really quickly. Digital sales. Go on Facebook. All of y'all that are struggling right now that don't have no money, go on Facebook, download Facebook, search in the groups tab, high ticket closing. Join every damn group you can find about sales. Look for every opportunity to be an appointment setter. That will get you in the door. Dedicate, dedicate this next year or two to getting good at this shit so you can start making some money. That's two of them you name. What's the other one? They said about seven, huh, Coach? Oh, uh, yeah, it's a lot, bro. It's, I don't know. It's so many lists. Coding. Um, YouTube automation, um, but these are gonna have a, a a bigger barrier to entry. Meaning, it's it's gonna require something from you in terms of a lot of time or 
some money invested for you to get started. Sales is something that I know you don't have to put nothing down in to join. So if you're not making that much money and you, you can't really put, put money into something, right? Get into sales, right? Do you have any editing skills? Right now, being a video editor is real popping. There are a lot of creators that are, that are you know, creating short form content, long form content. You, people are making, bro, I pay my fucking editor. My editor makes my videos. I paid this motherfucker over 50K last year. I pay him. <laughs> and this is this is the this is what and he works from home. He has several clients, but he does an amazing job. So I, I know it's possible. I'm paying a motherfucker what jobs are giving motherfuckers a, a year. So I know what is possible. If you just put your mind to it, dedicate the time to learn the skill, start providing value to somebody, all right. You can start making some money, bro. You can start improving your situation and that's going to allow you to slowly climb out of this hole you've dug yourself in. Okay? Uh, when you get a chance, yeah, I got you, Coach. When you get a chance, can you uh, put it back on the, uh, the link of a how to schedule a free conversation with you? Okay, I'm going to put it right now, man. Put it. I'm going to put the link. For all you guys that want to that want to get on a free consultation, man, I'm gonna post the link right now. All your dating questions. If you need help with dating, right? I'm gonna post the link in the chat right now. All right, bro. Got gotcha. you. And then um, when I and when I look at with you, you know, you're more than welcome to take some of my stuff and use it on another content. All the content are great. I'm not saying, you know. I'm not saying that's a negative. I'm just saying I want you to use some of my stories to help other guys that's in a little bit that's struggling just as much as I am. You get what I'm saying, Coach? No problem, man. Appreciate that, bro. I got you. Thank you. Thanks for your time, Coach. All right, man. Have a good one, G. Peace. All right, let's go iPad. iPad, and your name is not on here. Hey, how's it going? Where you calling from, bro? Why are you breathing like that? Sorry. Uh, How's it going? I'm good, man. What's your question? Uh, so, uh, I've, I've, um, I'm just going to cut to the chase. Um, uh, and, uh, I didn't hear what I, you said. I didn't hear what you just said, bro. Oh, I said, uh, I'm in a wheelchair, and I find it really hard trying to date being in the situation that I am. Okay. Like I've had a I've had a friend tell me like like I told him I was joining Tinder and he's like, Don't post pictures of yourself. And I'm like, what the fuck? Why not? He's like, because you don't want girls to think that they have to take care of you. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, that's unfair for them if I if don't post a picture of me. Cause then I'd I'd be lying to them. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you know, I've, I've I've watched your videos and I've watched a bunch of others and you know I'm trying to improve myself to the to the best that I can be, but then I'm af- I'm afraid that still that won't be enough because I'll be because uh, they'll they'll come down to the wheelchair kind of thing, right? Yeah. So you're in a position right now, bro, where your situation you can't control it. All right. Yeah. So so anything you do in terms of worrying about it is does you no good. It's unfortunate, but you just have to roll with what you got. I don't believe you should do what your friend is telling you to do and just don't post any pictures of yourself, right? Yeah, this this makes sense to me. Right. You got to you got to put yourself out there, right? Be as a complete of a man that you can be in other areas of your life, and what you can't control, you can't control. Right? Thank you so much. That makes me feel so much better. It, it, It. Worrying about shit that you can't control does nothing for you. All it does is it keeps you in a rut, keeps you feeling sad. Oh, well, right? I'm going to put myself out there and whoever, whoever, who, whoever I'm going to fuck with, I'm going to fuck with. Whoever doesn't like it, doesn't like it. I don't give a damn. That should be your mentality. Awesome. Thank you so much, brother. All right, man. Be good, man. Keep keeping strong, bro. You got this shit. Let's go. 
All right. Take care. Peace. Tyler. Tyler. Tyler, unmute yourself. You got your hand raised, bro. Tyler, unmute yourself. Okay, let's go. Adam MT. Oh, my bad. You gotta go. You gotta wait now. Adam, Adam. Adam, unmute yourself, G. Yeah, G, what's up? Where you calling from? Calling from friends. Okay, man, what you got for me? Yeah. Um, so I'll give you a little backstory if you if you don't mind. I don't want to take too much of your time. Okay, so, go ahead. Yeah. Um I'm kind of the guy who ran through girls at some point, had multiple late girls I would see and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it came to a point where I was like, I'm focusing on friends. And I just want I just want one girl by my side, right? Like leading towards a nuclear family. I know you might not agree with that, mm -hmm. but that is really just part on me, right? I wouldn't like marry to the state and get like fucked but those guys would do. Okay. So um in that mind I'm keeping that in head. The way I would manage relationships when I was with multiple girls at the same time was more beneficial to me. Like regarding attraction, they would get that like you said it yourself, like uh, I know I know the term you used, but like anxiety, like competitive anxiety. But now that she knows that I'm the guy that I'm with her and stuff like that, mm -hmm. um I don't know how to how to install that that competitive anxiety, even though I'm the I'm the high value man. I'm I'm actually like coming from good family, good education, I make good money, I have good looks. Uh, I'm a short king like you, though. So, okay. so really thing, like that kind of anxiety and how I should, how I should like, uh, not say behave, but like act into the relationships. You talk also about like uh, concessions and I wanted you to give me just the difference between what, what would you consider like a concession and not. Like, let's say she, I'm on, she's on the bed, right? I'm in the kitchen, her phone is next to me. And she asked me, like, could you grab it for me? Am I making a concession here? Am I not? That's it. Okay. Let's start one by one. Let's start with the first thing. How do you give her the competition anxiety? So what guys don't want to accept is the man that you were before you got this girl is the man that you must continue to be. This is why I don't believe in men completely leaving the game altogether. Even if you have one girl. You still need to be, the, the way you give women competition anxiety is to still be desired by other women. And the way you do this is to remain mysterious, always be dressing well. It does not mean you need to go throw in her face that you got other bitches or you got girls that want you, but she's going to see it. If you're maintaining your looks, if you're steady improving yourself, if you're always climbing for more, that ambition that you have is going to trigger in her mind that you're a man that is still attractive to other women. When you go out with her and you dress really nice and she sees other women looking at you, that's part of the competition anxiety. Right? This is how you have the woman, you know, kind of on eggshells still, even though she knows that you're with her. But unfortunately, a lot of guys, when they get with a girl, they throw all that out the window. The ambition goes to the wayside. They stop dressing well. They stop trying to be fit. You got to remain, even if you want to have a girlfriend, even if you want to have a family, guys, you got to keep up your looks and be doing everything like you was, you still out here trying to get bitches. Yeah. Even if you're not. But you get what I'm saying? Even if, even if you're not out here actively dating other women, you still, everything you were doing when you were still dating several girls, you got to keep doing. Right. Can I jump on that point you just mentioned right now? Go ahead. Yeah. So, you mentioning this, like the, the guy that you were, you was before, mm -hmm. before you got in with her, like she, she knows I'm a fuckboy, right? Like part of my attraction was the fact that I, I would get girls, like actually get them. Mm -hmm. But I can transition that, as you said, that like girls looking at me, and stuff like that. You're saying, well, like, see, seeing that there is some material for her that I could not leave her, but like that she could lose me, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, I, I just, I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, you got to keep that. You got to keep that up. 
You got to keep that up. I just want to mention that, uh, like, for, for her, I do feel and I do think that I'm the best option. Like, she's, she's, she's a good girl. Like, she cooks for me, does my laundry after I do, like, gym, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Propose dates, hits me up and shit. Um, on, the, on the mysterious part, how much do you allow, given that I'm in a relationship, to talk about? Like, are, are the only shit tests that she gives me even though, like, she gave me, like, value, competency, she tests, like, just to keep attraction going. This is, like, women. I come from game, so I'm used to that shit. Okay. How, how much do you allow yourself to tell her? Like, the only she tests to give me, she goes, like, you too me serious for me. Uh, like, last last weekend, my phone t- was off, and I was at the club, so she got a little worried and stuff. We met, had amazing sex and stuff. But after the, the, the pillow talk part, she was like, I, I, can, I just cannot handle it, like... Okay, 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 here we go. This is the part I don't agree with. Okay. Are we going to be in a relationship or are we going to be fuckboys? Because going to the club, turning your phone off when you got a girlfriend, it, you might think you you showing her up, but this is a great way, a fast way to, to, to cause her to lose this attachment to you. See, I don't believe in these stupid ass games, right? I believe in actually working on something in your life and your presence, your absence because of your working on something, right? Is what creates this mystery. Not you going to the club and not answering your girlfriend. All right. I don't, I don't think, I think that's a, these stupid ass games, the, don't play the, listen, we do not want to be the, this toxic nonsense that these girls do who are low value you don't want to do that shit you want to have boundaries if if you're her boyfriend um i wouldn't why are you going to the clubs what are you going to the clubs for just with the friends okay you need to, how much money did you make last year i made about like 125k you didn't make enough money you shouldn't have time to go to the clubs this is what i mean if you're busting your ass to be a better man if you're trying to learn something or improve your income, right? You will be that alone would will cause you to not have that much time to spend with her. But it's something that still shows her that you're working to be something that she wants to be a part of. Not her boyfriend going to the gym, I mean going to the club and ignoring her. Right. Right, cuz you wouldn't want her to do that shit. If, if as a matter of fact, if she do that shit, she'll be dumped in my eyes. All right, so I would, I, that's not some shit I would do. Get busy with improving your life. Get busy with trying to make some more money. Let your presence be missed that way. Not you playing these toxic games because you with your homies. If you out with dinner with your boys and stuff like that, great. You know, keep your phone on silent, but I don't, I don't believe in these, because I'm not going to tolerate that shit from her. Now, she can't be calling me every fucking hour and disturbing me when I'm busy. Those boundaries have to be set. But turning your phone off when you got a girlfriend and going to the club, doesn't that sound like what I tell you guys to not accept from women? No, you're right about that. Right. So get, like, let's create some mystery by actually working to be a better man. Not, not, not this toxic nonsense, right? And the second thing you asked me was, was it conceding if you brought her uh, her phone? Depends on how she asked it. Right? If, if, if a woman is asking you to do something and you, you could tell she's asking to see if you're going to do it or like, then I was I say, fuck that. I'm not giving you shit. Right. right? But if it's a genuine, hey, baby, can you pass me my phone? No problem. Okay, okay. But I if it's, hey, uh, well, hold up. But if it's, hey, uh, get my phone for me, right? Trying to, like, test your, your manhood and shit to see if you a bitch. Oh, no, we're not having that. Right. Okay. Allow me your last question. Go ahead. So, uh, right now, she's sick, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's part of, like, taking care of her, like, just dropping by quick, bringing her food, something like that. Would you, would you do that yourself? Would you like command it in a relationship? Would you like to recommend it, sir? Um, 
how what do you mean when she's sick? What do you mean by that? Like how when sick? She's sick she's, she just has a flu, like something like that. How often do you usually see her? I see her uh, once or twice a week. Sometimes I don't I don't text her like for like a day or two. Not because I miss her or whatever, just because I'm busy and stuff. Mm -hmm. Which which brings up the the mystery part, like a uh, on her end. That's why she keeps telling me you're being too mysterious. But yeah. Yeah, if she's sick, man, don't be a bad person and just, I, if you want to stop by and say, hey, baby, I was thinking about you. Hope you're feeling better. You bring her some medicine or something like that. I don't, listen, guys, I am not here to tell you guys to be this cold-hearted human being that doesn't, because what the reason why you don't want to be that guy, and I used to make that mistake of being that guy, is because you destroy the attachment that way. The thing about women is they need a little bit of romance, but they need that macho man as well. If it's all macho man and no romance, they start to feel like you don't really love them or care about them. If it's all romance and no macho man, they think you a bitch and they're going to run you. So you got to be able to give, give, feed her scraps, give, like surprise her. I saw you like talking about romance and mm -hmm. her. Could you just give like a few examples of like babying her, like the bad stuff you would do? Okay, so like, romance. romance to me is unexpected. Okay. Babying her is what most guys do. You just shower this girl with a attention and validation just because. Right? I have a main chick. I'm not being romantic or telling you none of this nonsense. Right, or telling you you look good, or baby, you look sexy, until I believe you deserve it. That's what they appreciate more. They don't appreciate the guy who leads with the validation and the trips and all that. When they earn their place in your life and you give that to them, right, they appreciate it even more. They value it even more. All right. Uh, one last thought that is on my mind. I'm, I'm sorry for the other guys. Um, when you make the, the talk about like boundaries, like I wouldn't date a girl or don't wouldn't be serious about a girl that goes to clubs, mm -hmm. or, like uh, has guy friends. What if she, what if she says yes, but also spins it on you? Like you wouldn't go in, to the clubs. You wouldn't meet like uh, girlfriends of yours. You wouldn't go like do that, do that. Do you do you accept it on your end or not? Uh, do I do my shit and you don't do your shit? So it depends. So, okay. This is interesting, right? Because it depends on what your boundaries are and what you've made clear from the beginning. I've made it clear that I'm going to date out of girls. Yeah. I didn't push for a relationship. I'm not asking no girl to be my girlfriend. As a matter of fact, I, I mean, I understand why girls would want to be my girlfriend, but I'm not so pressed to be any the girl's boyfriend. I They get more out of that than I do. All right? All right. But if you're going to be my main chick, if you're going to be my girlfriend, as to say, you're going to get things that other girls are not going to get. All right? I believe that you should, quote unquote, spoil your chicks, take them to nice places, buy them things when they have earned it. But that's me sharing my resources as a top guy. I'm going to give you the life of, you know, of a girlfriend at, from a top guy's perspective. Yeah. But I'm still going to fuck out of chicks. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you to maintain your spot as the girl that gets the resources. See, what women don't want to be honest about is they're willing to do this only for a certain group of guys. Do I, do I say that you could be a regular Joe and expect women... To, to share you, no. In terms of sexually, no. No, I definitely agree with that. I, I used to have the same thing as you. Maybe I'm not, not the same level. Ooh, definitely not. Yeah. Where I would date one girl, and I would tell her, like, give it, when she would push for a relationship, I'd say, I do my thing, you don't do your thing. And they would actually allow. They, they never, they never, I had never had one occurrence where a girl said no. But when I pushed for this, this way the transition gets a bit weird to me. Like, should I bring my old game that I used to run with the with the multiple women, with one woman also. That's the only transition part and confusing to me. 
but it's a learning experience, so I'll get by that. Yeah, and listen, but the more you can provide, the more experience you can get a girl, the more you're gonna get, the more privileges you're gonna get. <laughs> this is just this is just what it comes down to, bro. And this is this is what high value men, you know. This is the success that you suffer from, right? You, you hey, you a baller, you can do nice things, you can take all over the world, you can give her these experiences. This is this is all part of the making money part, right? You can give this guy these experiences. Hey, you don't have to like that. I don't forgot the girls, that I forgot the girls. If you decide to leave, I guarantee you another girl will be okay with that. They share top guys anyways. They do it. They do it with. They do it regardless. Yeah, they do. It's, it's the crazy part. They do it regardless. You so you might as well be a top guy and be the guy that they they share. I just say the girl who's your girlfriend, you clearly treat her differently. Yeah. Right. All right. All right, man. Have a good one, G. Have a good one. Peace. All right. Um. Let's go. There's a lot of guys with the hand raised. I don't know who is new. Let's go, Savon. Savon. Savon, raise your hand and, and where you calling from? Yeah, hello. Can you hear me? Yep. How's it going, man? Good. How are you, man? I'm doing awesome, G. Good, good. Uh, I just have a quick question, man. I'm a I'm 20 years old. I um I'm currently pursuing a uh, business degree Mm -hmm. uh, from a college. But um, one thing that like I've just I feel like is my calling in life and like is my passion is making music. Like I love making music and I've been making music for like over five years now. And I feel like now is like where I feel like now I'm making like the best that I can possibly make. You know what I mean? And I really want to try to make that my living in a way and um yeah either even if it doesn't work out like i'm still gonna do it because it's something that genuinely makes me happy and it makes me want to live you know what i mean so i'm like i'm just i just want to see your thoughts about it you know what i'm saying so if you love music right the the reason why (laughs) this is the thing guys now i'm being honest I have I, I'm kind of split on this because I've I've thought about it a lot. The whole deal with doing something you love, not or not caring about what you need to do to make money. But I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. If you love something, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to work hard on it. As a man, should you still work hard on something even though you don't love it? Yes. But if you love music, you need to start figuring out how can you start making profit from it. Start studying, right? Making music is one thing, but start become a become a become a research rat. Like, how do I make myself known? How do I start making my music profitable? Because it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot easier for you to take those steps and go through the ringer and go through the things that are you know the ups and downs with music because you actually love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like I've been doing a tons of research on like marketing online and like. Uh, Kind of like investing in myself so that eventually I can make it back. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of research about it, but I'm just like, you know, it's just something like it. Music making music makes me want to be alive. You know what I mean? And it's a way that I can like express myself. You know what I mean? And it's just like I just wanted to know like your thoughts because I know like you're like raw and you you say it how it is and like you you know you don't sugarcoat shit. So I'm just like you know if. I just want your thoughts, like, if it's, because, like, I'm cool, like, if I have to, like, work a job that I hate for the rest of my life just to live, then, like, I'm a, I'll do that, but, like, I'm still gonna make music. Right, know? okay, but, like, so, okay, 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 that's why I gotta stop you. Mm-hmm. I don't believe you motherfuckers need to work a job you hate for the rest of your life just to live. No. Yeah. Okay. I think you should be worrying about how you can make as much money as humanly possible. Uh, just a job. How much you making at this job? Say what? How much you making at this this side job you're doing? Oh, I don't have like a, a side job. I just work a regular nine to five right now. Okay, screw that. Keep the nine to five. Keep making music, but you gotta start working on something that's gonna give you financial freedom. And then, then whichever one gets you to the top fastest. 
So a regular nine to five is, is okay. Music is your passion, but you need money. And money is going to give you freedom. But you can earn that financial freedom if you become a star with music. But I need you to do both. I need you to figure out, learn a skill. All of you guys, I can't stress this enough. Go pick a skill that is going to make you at least $10,000 a month. That is a high income skill. Whether it's trading, whether it's sales, whether it's coding, whether it's content creation, whatever it is, you guys cannot be okay with being poor. Because guess what's going to happen? Guess what's going to happen when, when you start making some money with this skill? You can fund your music career a lot faster. You can maybe get in some doors that you wouldn't be able to get into without this money. So you can, you can be busting your ass with your music career while providing yourself with something that, that can at least fund it. Okay. So don't be okay. Hey, I know it's your passion, but you can't, you can't die poor. None of y'all should be okay with being poor. Go make some fucking money. Go learn a skill. None of y'all should be okay with your minimum wage job, with your 50k a year job, 30k a year job. Learn a skill. Yeah, yeah, bro. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, that was really it. Like, you know, I just wanted to be like, because there was times where I'm like, is this like unrealistic trying to like make a living from it? Like, should I just give up? But I was just like, do both. Yeah. I still am going to do it. But I'm just like, I really do want to try to make a living. And I've been doing a lot of research, like you said. And I'm, I'm really trying to lock in like now i'm really like locking in trying to like change my life man because this broke shit is lame as fuck yeah can't listen music if you bust your ass and you put yourself in the right doors you can you can make it with music but i don't want you to leave it up to chance make enough as much money as humanly possible dedicate yourself to wealth so you can fund your music career okay oh yeah I appreciate that, man. I, I do want to also want to say, man, you have changed my life, dog. I'm, I'm, man, you you've changed my life for real. Like especially growing up without like a father figure. My dad was an alcoholic, you know what I'm saying, and like wasn't in my life. And it's just like, you know, you've really helped me become become a good man, bro. I'm only 20. I just need to get this bag. But like, I've I've really I've came a long way, man. I've came a long way thanks to you, AMS, and Steph Cole, man. Keep doing what y'all doing. Y'all, y'all kings, bro. Appreciate you, man. Keep working hard, man. Keep climbing to the yes, top. Sir. All right, G? Yes, sir. Thank you. Have All right. a good one. Peace. All right, guys. I'm going to read some super chats for a second. Um, Super sticker from Corey2SS. Um, just in the super sticker. Big man, 7917. Uh, he goes, nuclear families are possible with... Let me, let me, let me show this. Big man, 7917, nuclear families are possible with feminine, fit, friendly, cooperative, submissive, and childless women overseas. I feel you, my G. Uh, Mav, the $30 uh, super chat. Big man team had a $5 super chat. Appreciate you, bro. Corey 2SS had a $0.99 cent super stick. Appreciate you, bro. Mav, did the time exercise thoughts did the time, exercise, thoughts, bro, work and study 64 hours, sleep 52.25, morning and night routines 16.5, gym, Muay Thai, Thai, yoga 12, social 12.5, want more so I'm not out of rich dork, travel 14.5, chill 2.5, clean minus total 168. So I understand what you're doing. Maybe some people don't understand. Basically, what he's doing is calculating the time he's dedicating to work, study, sleep, routines, gym, um, social, and you get 168 hours a week. Man, sounds like you got to figure it out, bro. Uh, but let's let's add some skill learning in there as well. I don't know if work and study includes the 64 hours, but if that's only that's the only hours you got for work and study. Let's add some more into learning a high income skill. All right. Let's drop, let's drop that chill time by another hour. 
let's drop that social time by another two hours, right? And let's get fucking more time into learning the damn skill. All right, man? Appreciate you, bro. All right, guys, before I get to the next caller, man, if you're a guy that I'm not able to get to tonight, right, or a guy that doesn't want to hop on the show, man, guys, click the link below to book a free consultation, man. A lot of you guys, you have questions, and I'm here to answer them. I'm here to help you out, all right? So click the link, book a free consultation, bro, right, and, and stop struggling. Don't accept the way you are. Be the best man you can be. So I'm, I'm going to post that link in the, in the chat right now. Look in the chat for that link, and I'm going to get to the next caller. Let's get next guy. Let's go. It's a lot of guys in the chat right now. Let's go Winston Joseph. Winston Joseph. Winston Joseph. What, what are you calling from, bro? What's going on, my man? What's going on, champ? Where are you calling from? Man, hey, everything is good. Oh, blessings, my peace. Are you Nigerian, my guy? Yep. Hey, I'm Haitian, man. So, you know, we come from the same same kind of, you know, type of area, type of place. Kind of. You was born in America? No, nah, I was born in Nigeria, bro. Oh, man. Moved to America I when I was it. nine. You're doing so much for the people that need to hear you, man. I appreciate that. So, uh, I just had a question for you, man. I, I, uh, my question was, so I, I've been going to this gym, mm -hmm. and I haven't seen you post a video about this, but I've been going to this gym, and I've been working out. There was a girl I was trying to talk to. You know, we work together. I'm a nurse. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a nurse. Um, so I met her back at work, and then I found out she was working, she was working out at the same gym as me. So recently, maybe about, I want to say, two weeks ago, I tried to talk to her, went up to her confident, used all the skills and everything, boom, got her uh, Instagram, so that was nothing. We had been chatting for a little bit. So um, I invited her out to eat. First um, mistake, first mistake. I, like during the day, like during the day, I'm not on a nighttime kind of vibe. It's it it don't matter. We, you know, we got the same schedule. She's a nurse. It's, it's still, it's still no. It's still a mistake. It's still a mistake. Right. You, you've made several mistakes so far, and I'm, a, I'm gonna guide you along the way so it doesn't get All too right. far. Okay, okay, I got what you're saying. First things first. Keep your money and pussy away from each other. Meaning, if this is a girl you work with, moving forward, I don't so want I for agency. I was, I'm a travel nurse, so I was at that location. Ah, okay, okay. So, yeah, let me, let me, uh, let me, uh, let me tell you anything. So we don't work together no more. She works at a different hospital. I work at a different hospital. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I meet her. You know, we work, we work, work out at the same gym. Um, I ask her out, you know, to just to go to brunch during the day. Um, then she tells me, oh. uh, like the date I set up, like it was too too soon. I was like, too soon. Like we have been, we it's not like we don't know each other. You know what I'm saying? Like we we been texting. We you know we cool. Like you know what I'm saying? It's, oh no, that's the problem. You know, stop right there. Let me slow you down, bro. Okay, go ahead. The moment you get any resistance from setting plans with a woman, you need to be out there. Oh, so that's that, that's another thing. After she told me that, like she was, it was like too soon. Like I, I just cut that shit off. I cut that shit off. I stopped texting her, and now I see her in the gym. And like when she see me, we don't speak. I don't say nothing to her. I don't got nothing to say to you, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm doing everything you talked about in the video. Walking confidently, head up. I got my swagger walk. I'm doing all that, right? Mm -hmm. So she's following me around the gym, right? And there was these two girls. They were staring at me. I'm, I'm over there. I'm, I'm lifting weight. They were staring at me. And she walks all the way over from the other gym to talk about how I was trying to talk to her. Like, to where I, I was not far away from her, to, like, not to hear. I overheard it. And I'm like, damn. Like, so what do you do in that situation? Like, because I ain't do I just, let, I didn't say nothing. I just, like, whatever. So she went to the I girls. She went to the, yeah. she, oh, she a cockbox. She, this is what women do, guys. Yeah. This is what women do. Listen, 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 listen. This is why I don't want y'all talking to any girl at your gym. Leave them hoes alone. <laughs> Bro, women get a kick from toying with men. Crazy, she, she didn't want to give you the time of day. 
But oh nah, she ain't finna let the mother girls get you because now now it's gonna say it's gonna make her look bad because she didn't take that opportunity. So she would just rather ruin it and make you look like the bad guy. This is why, guys, you have to be super selective with the women you choose to deal with. This is the kind of girl that I would not want to talk to. So what do I do? Like leave her the hell alone. I know I'm not talking to her, but what I'm saying, what do I do? Like if she continues to do that, is there a strategy? Is there is nah? There you just do to finesse that. What do I do? You just what I would I would avoid talking to women that you go to the gym with. As simple as that. Huh? Because they they they'll paint you in a bad light. Like yeah, true. They'll paint you in a bad light, and then now you look like a weirdo, right? Or a guy that's trying to sleep with every girl. They will do that to you. So leave the girls that you work with alone. Leave the girls that you go to the gym with alone. Don't deal with them. Don't even uh, talk to them, right? If listen, my strategy, guys, for gym girls is this. I'm gonna tell you guys my strategy. If you ever want to smash a girl from your gym, the best thing to do is to have an Instagram profile where you're consistently posting content and you're tagging your city. Yeah. Or or you tag your gym. I get so many girls find me through this. All you got to do, bro, is tag. If you in the, if you ever take a gym photo, tag your gym. If you have, tag your city. All the girls that want you in that gym are going to find you. Guaranteed. Nice. Nice. Now you get to sit back and you get to pick and choose. Instead of being a guy, because I made this mistake. The reason why I'm giving this advice because I've made this mistake. I thought that, hey, if I if I if I see a cute girl, I'm gonna go up to her. But I had leverage. I I bro, I'm I got a little bit. I'm not I'm not famous yet, but I got a little bit of little bit of clout on IG. I got good photos. I look good. Girls are already sweating me. Why am I stressing girls in my gym when they will be pursuing me? I was doing it the wrong way. The right. everything with girls, guys, is about leverage. How can you give yourself the leverage? It does not mean you be a bitch and not know how to talk to girls, but I've I've approached hundreds of girls. I know how to talk to girls, but in that environment, it's not in your best interest. The better thing for you to do is to put yourself out there, bait them, and let them find you. But a lot of you guys, you don't have a good Instagram profile. You don't post high quality pictures. You're not doing much with your life. So it, it, how are the girls going to find you? So you got to approach. And now when you approach, you're going to tell you she got a boyfriend. Now you're going to look like a creep because you're trying to talk to every girl in the gym. Play the game the right way. It's all about leverage. All you guys listening right now, all y'all Instagram suck. A lot of y'all Instagram suck. Click the damn link in the chat right now. All right? I have an Instagram ebook. Everything you need to do on Instagram, it's completely free to get more dates on Instagram. All right? It's called IG Playbook. Who is that in the background? My bad, man. You I'm, good. I'm, I'm at work right now. You good. All you guys with your, with your suckish Instagrams that are not getting you laid, they're not getting you dates. I created an IG playbook of everything your Instagram needs to have for you to consistently attract girls on Instagram. I've had several girls in my gym find me on IG, like my photos, follow me, DM me. And why? Because I set it up. I stopped doing the approach bullshit. So focus more on creating an image that's attractive on Instagram. Start tagging you guys, bro. You guys understand. Y'all don't even know what the fuck Inst Instagram is the biggest day now. You guys know the explore page. You guys understand oh, if yeah. you if you tag your city or you tag a location, people in that location will fucking every time they go on that explore page, they're gonna see you. You don't even gotta do nothing. All you, I'm I'm giving you the game right now. If you create a good Instagram profile with dope pictures. You in great shape and you tag your city or your gym. The girls that have been to that gym or in that city will find you just by tagging it. Instagram will push it to the people in the same city. You got all you do is sit back. Wait for the DMs to come. Wait for the likes to come. 
All right. I got one more question for you, man. Uh, are you, you you located in Miami? Nah, man. I'm I'm back and forth right now from Miami to Medellin, Colombia. All right, that's that's dope, man. I'm 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 going to be down there this Memorial Day weekend for the Afro Nations event. Um, if you down there, man, hit me up. Uh, I, I already follow you on Instagram. So it's Winston J underscore. All right, man. Underscore, so. Miami's a jungle, bro. Miami's a oh, jungle. Man, listen, I'm from Miami, so I already know. <laughs> So I already know. That's but dope, yeah, man. man. I appreciate you, man. Hey, be easy. I follow you on Instagram. Follow back. I right, man. You do that. I right, man. Have a good one, bro. Peace. You too. All right. Hey guys, IG man is a is is a hack, bro. IG is a hack. What I've learned, guys. What I've learned the last few years of game, the last few years of a man as being a man, like improving myself, is that it's mostly about leverage. You got to have the hardcore skills, right? Guys to know, you guys to be able to talk to women. You still have to have that confidence. But man, it's it's setting the right pieces up. I believe Dan Bazarian has talked about this. And it's completely right. He's completely right about that. Setting yourself up to be the guy they choose, man, your day in life will be. This is why I've been stressing so much about you guys creating an attractive image. You guys taking good photos. You guys getting in good shape. These things are things that if you do, they can consistently attract you women. Instead of you having to pull teeth to get girls, you set yourself up in a way where they're constantly coming to you. Literally, bro, I'll be posting my reels. Tagging Miami. Girls in Miami. I post my reels. Girls in the city or hit me up. All you got to do is you create content, you create, you put yourself in a good light and then you put yourself in an avenue where women are and they're going to find you. It's that simple. I'm going to take one more call, guys. One more call. I know there's a lot of y'all in there. In the waiting room, we're going to do these every single week. Um, I'm going to take one more guy, one more guy, one more Guy, who's going to be the guy? Who's going to be the guy? Let's go, Nicholas Hudson. Nicholas Hudson, you're the last guy for the day. Nicholas Hudson. Um, How you doing, sir? How's it going, man? Where you calling from? I'm calling from Louisiana. Awesome, man. That's where I, that's where I grew up. What you got for me? Oh, for real? Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. Well, I'm not, I'm not from here, so I'm stationed in the military. So I'm I'm not here uh, <laughs> on my own basically. Okay. What's your question? Yeah. So my question is, um, I, it's a, a small little backstory. So I just found God again. Okay. And I realized that I went with my boys to DC. There was a few times when I was there, and I didn't even really leave the best impression. Um, and the women that were there. Quite frankly, I didn't realize that I'm not that that good when it comes to social cues. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. I'm very. I've been. I watch Kevin Samuel. I watch you know you guys. I watch Fresh and Fit. I've seen all of them, and you know I understand the whole point of you know building yourself up and, and also trying to like give yourself the leverage. Leverage, but for some reason, um, whenever I would find myself in these situations, uh. Essentially, it's my with my personality because I have a very outgoing personality. It might be a little too much. So currently, I'm just putting my head down. I'm I'm getting on my grind. I'm not I'm trying to fix that that part of me where it's like I have to essentially reel myself in when it comes to being with people. So my question to you is, when it comes to these women, when I'm approaching them with my you know my natural personality, do I need to like? How, how exactly should I use uh, my charm in the way that's not too overbearing, but at the same time, it's it, it works? Does that make sense? Okay. So I'm going to draw it up to you guys right now. I'm explaining to you guys exactly how you need to approach women. All right. So I'm about to pull up my, my notes. I'm about to share my screen. <laughs> Give me a second. And I'm explaining to you why this is the best way to approach women. 
One second, guys. So pay attention to this. All right. It's gonna be on the YouTube, so you might have to you might have to turn my volume down on YouTube. Right? But can you see? I'm about to share my screen, guys. I'm about to explain to y'all how you approach girls. One second. Can y'all see my screen? Can y'all see my Zoom thing? My Zoom notes? Uh, no, sir. I'm just looking at your, your face. Okay, you got it oh, not, on, it, on not, YouTube. On, on YouTube, yeah, I can see it. All right, awesome. So I'm explaining to you guys the best way to approach women. All right, so first things first, all right? Approaching women, the first thing you need to understand is you need to look at it from an outcome independent mindset. My handwriting sucks, but I don't live with it. Outcome independent. What this means is you're not dependent on an outcome. The reason why a lot of guys, like you're explaining, you are missing social cues or you might be doing too much or you might be not doing enough is because you're hoping for an outcome. When you're outcome independent, you don't give a shit what happens. You're looking at the interaction as a filter on if you want to see this girl again. So instead of looking at approaching women as, oh, I'm hoping I get her number or I hope I say the right thing. I'm only talking to this girl to figure out, do I like her? When you have that mindset, you stop trying to memorize shit. You stop trying to make the interaction go well. And you kind of put her So what you want to do is now let's get into the framework. These are the frameworks of approaching women. What you want to do is you want to ask her one to two questions about herself. We're going to do a little role play right here on live. Okay? I'm I'm a walk I'm a walk th- I'm a walk through this with y'all. So, imagine I'm a girl at the grocery store that you see. How would you approach me? Let's start it off with everything I've told you so far. So initially, I'll see. No, 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 no. Yeah, I'm, I'm talk to me. My name is Amanda. Oh no, you don't know my name. You don't know my name. I don't have a name. You see me in a grocery store right now. How do you approach me? Go ahead. I'm just trying to let you know I saw you coming from the back and I just thought you were gorgeous. Uh, What's your name? First mistake. Damn. What did I say in the beginning? Outcome independent. And the first thing you do is compliment the chick. Right, right. Yeah. This is what got. I just saw you coming from the back and I just thought you were gorgeous. What the? I don't, what? The outcome independence goes out the window. Now you, she knows exactly where you stand. She knows that you think she's hot and you're here to get her number. You guys need to stop approaching women with compliments. They have not earned a compliment. You need to be outcome independent. Go ahead. I'm in a grocery store right now. Let's go. You like bananas? I just got they are they're super ripe because they taste like the heaven on earth. What the fuck are you talking about? Oh shit. Here we go. <laughs> it's more bullshit. This is this is why guys struggle with approaching girls. Now, you know what he just did, guys? He just did the indirect approach. 
Let me talk about some nonsense to start a conversation. For what? That makes you look weak. Outcome independence. Try it again. How's it going? Stop, stop, uh, okay, that's great. You like bananas? What's your for? Uh, bananas, all right. I'm just getting off work, getting some groceries. I heard, I heard you. I heard you. What's your like your go to if you had to pick, like you know, for like your afternoon, uh, you know, snack? Um, I like Greek yogurt. It's healthy. Oh, you like okay, like smoothies? Yeah, smoothies are great. Hard, dude, that's crazy. It's crazy. Nah, I'm, I'm trying to do myself like a nice smoothie diet. Try to like cleanse myself. You know, I'm trying to stay as healthy as possible. Too. I like that. I like that a lot. Let's do that. Great. I'm Nick. I'm Nick, by the way. Awesome. My name is Samantha. Nice to meet you. Samantha, that's a very nice name. Thank you. What you do for work? Um, I'm actually a nurse. You're a nurse? Oh, so you work heavy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, long shifts, you know how the nurse life is. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure, for sure. Do you love it? It's all right. That don't sound like you, if you do all that work, I would hope you love it. <laughs> yeah, you know, got to pay the bills, you know. Nah, that's just, that's just... But hey, all right, you know, I'm about to get going. You know, take care of yourself. Okay, have a nice day. That was the best part. What you just did at the end, that was the best part of the conversation. You know why? You know why? Not why. You had outcome independence. You didn't ask her out. Why didn't you ask me out? You sound boring. Exactly. <laughs> That's my whole point. That's my point. Here we go. Let's do it again. That part of the conversation was the best part of the conversation. You saw that she wasn't giving you anything back. You told her to have a nice day. Now, let me show you how a normal conversation would go with a woman that was actually interested. Let's do it again. What's up? What's up? No, I'm just I'm in Walmart trying to find me some bananas, the smoothie. How about you? Oh, not much. You're shopping for some groceries. Nice, nice, nice. Anything particular? Um, I'm actually going to be making a smoothie later. Um, so I'm going to get some strawberries, some bananas, maybe some Greek yogurt. What about uh, you? Okay. See, copy of me now. I was kind of going to go for the same thing. The only difference, I was going to throw a little, like, a little bit of grapes in there, a little bit of oats. Oh, you making a smoothie too? I was. Oh, okay. Well, you. What's your name, by the way? I'm Nicholas. Oh, I'm Samantha. How's it going? Doing good. I'm doing good. I just got out of work. You know what I'm saying? I'm in the military, so they they had to give us mad hours. So this is the only time I get to go to the store. Oh wow, the military. How long you been in that? Uh, about three years and like two months. Oh, cool. What made you get into the military? I uh, help my family out, you know, help out my community, and then give my send my mother on vacation in that order. <laughs> That's dope. But what made you move all the way up here to Louisiana? Were you like stationed here or something? Yeah, I'm stationed here. Uh, so I'm from New York. Uh, I'm actually, I didn't come here on purpose. Um, they moved us out here probably after like, let's say like two months of, of uh, boot camp and then test school, and we got to come out here for a little bit. So, oh, wow. It's okay. It ain't the best, but it could be worse. Yeah, New York to Louisiana is a big change. <laughs> Very big. Hate the way they drive down there. It can't be worse than New York. Nah, I love. I'd rather. I'd rather be yelling at somebody than driving twenty five miles an hour behind a grandma all damn day. No. I, I got you. It's a different, different, different culture, I guess. Much very different. The people are very nice, though. Let's hope that you nice. Though. I do. Depend on the person. So what that mean? 
depends on the person. If I like the person or not. If I don't like the person, then I have to be nice. That's fair. That's fair. Can't mm. complain on that. Yep. Well, listen, you know, you take care of yourself, all right? I'm about, I, gotta, I gotta get going. I got a lot of a lot of stuff to do and not a lot of time. Okay. So you just fucked that up. What? Huh? I asked you several questions about yourself. Oh, oh, you was interested. And you did not take the lead. I ain't telling a girl to ask you out, motherfucker. You gotta still take the lead as a man. If you have a conversation with the girl, you you proceed things to a to a date. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Damn. All right. Yeah, you're thinking about too much. You're not letting the conversation flow. It's that simple, bro. But you see how you didn't have to memorize anything? Did you have to know anything about me? Did you have to have a line you memorize? All you had to know was your name and be able to introduce yourself. You can have a perfect conversation with a young lady if she's asking you questions back. You just screwed that up and then proceeded to a date. Mm. I see what you're saying. Okay. So when a woman ask you question back. You now lead this conversation by inviting her to do something that you already enjoy doing. So let's let's slow back. Let's slow down a little bit. Let's go back towards the end. Instead of you saying what you just said, transition now to the day. Let's go. I got a lot. I only got a little bit more time left, so I got to get back going. But listen, since I like smoothies, you like smoothies. Faith, baby, we can do this another time. What's your availability look like? Wrong. No? What? Listen, what did I just tell you to do? You said to, to transition. And do what? And to invite her, invite her on a date. And buy how to do something that you already enjoy doing. Oh, okay. What is this? Gotcha. What is do this another time gonna mean? What what the fuck does that mean? Do what smoothies? We're gonna go to come back to the grocery store. What this this is what I mean. You guys are not setting clear dates. The end of the conversation should be like, hey Samantha, it was nice knowing you, but I gotta get going. How about we go bowling next Saturday? Clear, concise. I am only accepting her response to a date. Gotcha. I'm not taking her number. I'm not getting her Snapchat. I'm not doing anything but inviting her to something that I already enjoy doing. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Last time. I promise. I got this. Got Go ahead. You? You like basketball? I uh, never play basketball, actually. <laughs> never? Oh, bust your ass. <laughs> you all play some hoops? This will be a lot of fun. Um, can I let you know? Nah, come on. You, you got a guy, you ain't want to go, you don't want to go. Come on, it's going to be fun. Uh, how about I just give you my number and then I'll let you know. I'll tell you what. If anything, all right, pause real quick. Pause real quick. In in this moment, in these moments, like when they when they give that resistance, I remember that means they're like, you I actually just let it let it go. Yes. If she tells you anything but yes, here's my number, you tell, okay, well, it was nice talking to you. Have a nice day. You don't why did you your initial your initial response was to try to convince her. You said, ah, it would be fun. That's trying to convince her. And I would not do something like basketball for the first day. Okay. Your dates should be something that you can lead, something that you already are good at, but something that you can at least teach the girl where you can escalate things to sex, right? You, it, it's it, basketball, uh, leave that for when you guys are already dating. So do it one more time. Okay, okay. You like mini golf? I've actually only played once, and that was last year. But it seemed like it was it was super fun. Okay, okay. Well, 
okay, okay. You, did, you had a good score? You played with your friends? Um, yeah, I went with a group of girlfriends. That was about it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, listen, I know this, look, this one spot is over one hour where I'm at. I'd love to take you. Okay. When you're free. Oh, my God. Ah, <laughs> uh, damn it, damn it. I'm supposed to say yes, right? Damn it. It's hard. This is, this is, this this is, is not hard. Condition. This is not hard, bro. You're just overthinking it. All right. So the first thing, the first mistake you made was the moment you go to asking her out, you go, you start getting nervous. A lot of you guys do this. Um, uh, um, uh, here comes the uncertainty. You need to, this is the moment you need to be the most certain. Why are you nervous to ask her out? Why are you unsure? Why is your energy shifting? You're getting scared. You're showing lack of confidence right now. And then you invite her to something and now you're wondering what, who, who she went with last time. Why do you give a fuck about all this shit? You're stalling. You're beating around the bush. And then to make it even worse, you're now telling her, when are you free? Now, you, now you've led the whole conversation and now you brought to bring it right back, put the ball in her court. I told you guys, the date should be Let's do something that I already enjoy doing at a specific time. If you guys need to adjust the time, you can adjust the time. Not when is she free? Remember, what, 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 was, the, what was the mindset? Outcome independent. Right. That means uh, you get a chance to be a part of my life. Mm -hmm. I really don't give a damn when you free. If you can't make the day I give you you can suggest another day, but I'm not sitting up here waiting around for when you're free. So do that again. One more time and we're done for the day. All right. All right. You like mini golf? Yeah, I actually went last year with a group of friends. It was dope. That's what's up. That's what's up. Come with me. Next place week on Saturday. Nine o'clock. Okay, that sounds like a plan. Oh, cool, cool. Where's your phone? Put my number in it. Um, you want me to? You want me to take your number? No, nah, I'll take yours. Okay, you go again, getting nervous, bro. Okay, <laughs> you go again, getting nervous, uh, bro. I is this is this is why I tell you guys this this all you only get better at this with practice. Now you get you you you're uncertain. Just be calm. You're giving her an, an opportunity to be a part of your life. Let's go mini golf next Saturday. Let me tell you how I know you got nervous. You raised the your your speech pattern got increased. You started speaking a little bit faster. You were calm the whole interaction. Now you're talking fast. Calm down. What is the rush? You're getting nervous. You invite her to do something that you already enjoy doing, and you take her number once she agrees. Gotcha. Okay. Got it. All right. So, one last time. One last time. Go ahead. All right. You like mini golf? Yeah, I actually went. Last year with a group of friends. It was it was fun. That's what's up. That's what's up. Come with me next week. Nine o'clock on Saturday. Okay, that sounds like a plan. But let me put my number in your phone. Why are you giving her your number? You take her number. Oh, uh, give me your number. Just what's your number? What's your number? There we go. Right, you're making this a little bit too complicated, and I understand you guys don't have the practice doing this, but that's how you approach women. You don't force a conversation. If she's asking you questions, you keep the conversation going. You don't have to memorize a line. You don't have to memorize no pickup nonsense. You're going up to a woman with outcome independence, seeing if you if you like talking to this girl for two minutes to take her out. 
to invite her to do something that you already enjoy doing. If you don't like talking to her for two minutes, you can tell her to have a nice day. And then when you do ask her out, you're giving her something that you want to do and you're inviting her to be a part of it and you're taking her contact information. Okay? Gotcha. Yes, sir. All right, man. Go practice it, man. Have fun. All right, bro? Appreciate it, y'all. Appreciate it. All right, man. Be good. All right. All right, guys. I personally do this activity with all the guys I coach um, because I understand something that guys have a problem with, and this translates to dates as well. If you're nervous talking to a girl, I actually have guys record themselves talking so I can help them, you know, smoothen on their speech patterns, patterns, right? Fix what they're saying so they can get better approaching girls. And then when they do go on dates with girls, they find them attractive. They can escalate these dates to, to, to sex, right? So if you're a guy, man, that wants my help one-on-one, bro, don't forget to click the link, right? To book a free consultation. This is what I do. And I can help you get your game to the next level. But, you know, you got to be willing to do the work. So that's it for today, guys. Click the link if you haven't already. All right. The free consultation link. Click the link if you haven't already. And I'm going to see you guys next week. All right. Book a free consultation. The link is in the chat right now. If you're struggling with women, any questions you have, any help you need, I can help you out. Book that. Click that link in the chat right now. Click that link to book a free consultation. And let's take your day in life to the next level. All right, guys. It was fun. All the guys in the Zoom chat, make sure you fill up the next Zoom chat. I'm going to get to you guys. It's first come, first serve. And that's it, guys. It was fun. Deuces. See y'all next week. Peace.